and welcome to Science View, where we cover the latest advances in Japanese science and technology. I'm your navigator, Tomoko Kimura, and this week, Science Watcher is Dr. Yoichi Sato from the University of Tokyo. Hello, I'm glad to be here with you today. Here is today's lineup. Today on the leading edge, we have the excavation of Japan's first complete dinosaur skeleton. There has been a sensational dinosaur discovery in Japan. And on J Innovators, Michelle? I'll be introducing a Takumiu innovator who developed an efficient piston. A piston is at the heart of a car's engine. We'll introduce an innovator who reduced the friction created by a piston. He improved the engine's power with a new technique, which hasn't been possible until now. But first, we'll begin with today's Science News Watch. Dr. Sato? A parody of the Nobel Prizes. The Ig Nobel Prizes annual ceremony was held at Harvard University on September 17, 2015. A Japanese doctor received the Medicine Prize. This prize was established in 1991. The theme of 2015 was life. The Medicine Prize was given to Dr. Hajime Kimata from Neyagawa, Osaka, and others who studied the suppressant effects on allergic reaction by kissing. Kimata conducted research on 60 patients who suffer allergic inflammation in nasal passages and or skin. He examined the size of the swelling from cedar pollen or mites before and after 30 minutes of kissing with their partners. And the result, after kissing, the swelling was reduced. It proved that kissing suppresses allergic reactions. The Ig Nobel Prize is given to research that makes people laugh and think. This is the ninth year in a row that Japanese have received the Ig Nobel Prize. Dr. Kimata showed gratitude through a video message and said, I'm honored to be awarded the Ig Nobel Prize. I hope that people will understand new effects of kissing. Now, as for the 2015 Nobel Prize winners, two Japanese have been announced, Dr. Satoshi Omura in Physiology or Medicine, and Dr. Takaki Kajita in physics. I'm happy we can say that Japanese have contributed to science in many ways. And now for the leading edge. Today's theme is the excavation of Japan's first complete dinosaur skeleton. But, Dr. Sato, I thought dinosaur fossils have already been found in Japan. Right. Please look at this. These dinosaur fossils that have been discovered in Japan are only pieces. Finding a whole skeleton is rare. I see. And that's why if a complete skeleton could be found, it would be a major discovery. Exactly. Up until summer of 2014, an excavation with that potential was being carried out. This is a fossil found in Mukawa, Hokkaido. At first, only this section of tail bones was found in a cliff. This fossil is a piece of the centrum, the central part of the vertebra, and it's about 7 to 8 centimeters in diameter. But they couldn't figure out which way the tail was buried. Why is the direction so important? Because if bigger tail bones are discovered, then it will connect to the trunk and that could lead to a full skeleton. But if smaller tail bones are discovered, then only the end of the tail bones will be found, which doesn't lead to a full skeleton. Let's watch the excavation process. The Great Dinosaur Excavation Project is in the Hobetsu area in Mukawa, Hokkaido. A preliminary survey for the excavation was held in May 2012. Today is the day that will confirm the direction of the tail bones. <laughs> Dr. Yoshitsugu Kobayashi from Hokkaido University is a leading authority on dinosaur study and the leader of this excavation project. They keep walking along a mountain road for 30 minutes carrying bear bells. They finally reach the middle of a 40-degree slope cliff. The tailbone fossils were found here. 
This excavation is a joint project run by Hobetsu Museum and Hokkaido University. Once they remove the soil on the surface, mudstone, which is a rock composed of silt, appears. <laughs> there is some distance between the surface of the rock and the fossils inside. Fossils are inside hard rock like this. Already it looks like part of a fossil appears. Here, it's a little difficult to see, but actually a bone has appeared. In this hollow area, bones were discovered in a row. Therefore, there's a possibility more bones are still buried here. Are the fossils hidden inside only the tail bones or the trunk? The fossils uncovered next are... That's it. Yes, yes, we got it. More of the centrum has been unearthed. This is about nine centimeters in diameter, which is the biggest centrum ever discovered so far. It means that this has to continue to the trunk. The possibility of a buried full-bodied dinosaur is high. This is the biggest spinal tailbone ever discovered. If we're lucky, the full body is buried here. It's great news. They seem excited, and it looks like the piece that leads to the body has been discovered. It's remarkable. The areas where complete dinosaur skeletons have been found are usually in North America, China, or Mongolia. But they haven't been discovered yet in Japan. Here are some reasons. Japan is mountainous and covered with trees. There are few surface rocks, so fossils are difficult to find. Another reason is that Japan is on the intersection of tectonic plates. That causes frequent diastrophism, the deformation of the Earth's crust. Also, dinosaur fossils are found in stream deposit. Consequently, those bones are not intact. But those fossils found in Hokkaido seem quite big. Why is that so? The ancient condition of Hokkaido is the reason. This is what Hokkaido looked like in the Mesozoic era. The blue part was the ocean. So it was mostly underwater? Yes. 72 million years ago, this excavation area was the, at the bottom of the ocean. That is the key point of this discovery. Some dinosaurs that lived near the beach were washed into the ocean after they died. Then an accumulation of ocean debris slowly created a fossil. So the possibility of a buried full body remaining is high. Will a full body be discovered? A full-scale excavation begins. It was September 2013. The attempt of the excavation team to discover the first ever full body skeleton began. To deal with the difficult hard rock to be removed, they used a digger. Those fossils were found here. First, they cut both sides of the cliff for easy digging. Then remove the cliff with a rock drill. Once close to the bones, they dig piece by piece with a hand tool. The closer the bones, the smaller the tools used. Ah, this could be, yes, it's the centrum. The revealing brown stone is a fossil of the centrum. It is the tailbone marrow. Dr. Kobayashi, isn't this a bone? Oh, it came out from such a place? Then a bone from the hemo arch, which is below the centrum, was discovered. From day one, many bones, which look like a part of tail bones, have been found. However, Kobayashi is perplexed. What is wrong? 
Many fossils were in a close, narrow area. Trying to take them out at the location might destroy them. The important thing to do is to safely dig them out with protection. There are many difficult challenges ahead, but we will do our best. What they used here is a fossil protection technique with plaster called a jacket, which has been frequently used in foreign excavations. Cover the whole rock containing a fossil with linen soaked with plaster. It is like a plaster cast for fossils. Once the plaster hardens, move the rock away from the location. By using this technique, you can collect fossils safely without damaging them. It has been a week since the excavation began. The fossils discovered are getting bigger, getting close to the trunk. What is that? May I see it? The revealing fossil is at least 15 centimeters wide, and it continues below. It's big. Finally, it shows up. It isn't a mistake. This is definitely a full skeleton. So far, they have discovered only tail bones, but this fossil is a piece of a back leg. And also, they have made a discovery that let them determine the kind of dinosaur it is. Finger of Hadrosaurus, as expected. It's a toe. He says that this is a member of the herbivorous Hadrosaurian dinosaurs. It has characteristic broad rectangle fingers. What they found proved to be a Hadrosaurian dinosaur. This is big. Yes, it's huge. It's really interesting to learn the process, how they pursue excavation. This is a reproduction of a dinosaur. The dinosaur's estimated size is 80 meters long and 7.2 tons heavy. That is huge. The Hadrosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period with the Tyrannosaurus. The notable point is that the Hadrosaurus were found on various continents like Europe, Asia, and North America. They are also found in a warm and cold region, like Antarctica and Alaska in the Arctic Circle. It shows they could adjust to various environments. Their cranial bones, especially the structure of the jaw and teeth, are the key to their thriving. Please look at this. This is a replica of the cranial bones of a Saurolophus, a kind of Hadrosaurian dinosaur discovered in Mongolia. Their characteristic feature is a beak like platypus. Also, they have densely packed back teeth, about 800 to 1,000 in total, which allows them to eat hard plants and take in nutrients efficiently. I guess that helped them to survive and evolve over time. Exactly. Another characteristic feature of Hadrosaurian dinosaurs is this crest on their head, like you see here. The shapes are very interesting and unique, but why are there so many? Because having many kinds of crests helps the dinosaur to judge friend from foe and also to find mating partners. From this excavation, we might find a unique crest dinosaur, which could lead to a new kind of Hadrosaurian dinosaur. So let's follow the excavation. In September 2014, to unlock the whole picture of this dinosaur, the excavation team was headed for the biggest target, the discovery of the head. 
The excavation team has been convinced that a whole body is under the rock. They have decided to cover the whole rock with plaster to take out fossils efficiently. This is the Earth's surface two years ago when they started the excavation. It's already been dug six meters deep. While the expectation of the cranial bones discovery is increasing, it follows other major discoveries. Teeth bones have been found one after another. Finding teeth means the fossils of cranial bones must be buried nearby. Kobayashi was analyzing the fossil distribution. Those red dots are the areas where teeth have been found this year. I assume the head must be somewhere around this area according to this distribution. Kobayashi predicts that the cranial bones are buried around this area based on the positional relation between the tail and leg fossils and the teeth that have been found concentrated in this area. On the 16th day since the excavation began, Kobayashi focuses on a fossil brought back from the location. When you trace this outline, you will see bones. What you see is a section of a fossil. Kobayashi suspects this might be a cranial bone. It's definitely not a front or back leg. Of course, it isn't a rib, and it isn't a shoulder or hip bone either because it has such a complicated shape. The possibility that it could be a cranial bone is very high. Is this section truly a cranial bone? Swiftly, the fossil was scraped clean. And finally, the day comes. Yes, no mistake. This is the head. It's a maxilla bone. These are the cranial bones that have been found. The fossil fits with a section of the upper jaw. It was confirmed as a fossil of the cranial bones. This major excavation has finally reached the fossil of the head. The rest of the major parts are expected to be hidden inside these rocks. They finally found part of the cranial bone but it seems like there's still a lot of difficult work to be done. Yes, there is. However, Kobayashi has extensive experience with excavations and the hands-on examinations of many fossils in various locations. From his experiences, he firmly understands the three dinosaur's three-dimensional structures. That's right. They found a piece of the jaw this time, but do you feel they'll be able to find other parts of the head as well? During the cleaning, Many bones that looked like cranial bones were found. And more important discovery might be inside the jacket. Actually, some of the parts have been verified to go together. That's great news. But what effect does this discovery have on dinosaur study in Japan? It's generally believed that Japan is a difficult place to find dinosaurs. However, after this discovery, many full dinosaurs skeletons might be discovered in Japan. In fact, even in this discovery, the fossil of the tail bones was initially found in 2003. They are stored without being recognized as a part of the dinosaur. Therefore, things that weren't sort of as pieces of a full dinosaur until now might even lead to a major discovery. Michelle, 
Today's Takumi Innovators technology has got something to do with this. He's created an epoch-making item, which is this. Can you guess what it is? It's a piston. Let's go meet him. The Takumi's company is in Sagamihara, Kanagawa Prefecture. It is a city where manufacturing flourishes. Hello, I'm Michelle Yamamoto. Hello, I'm Shimodaira. This is today's Takumi, Eiji Shimodaira. The Takumi's company specializes in surface finishing of metal parts. The pride of his work is this aluminum piston. A special surface treatment has been applied. This is the device that applies the treatment. Inside this device, the piston is coated with DLC. DLC stands for diamond-like carbon. It is a method that makes metal surfaces as strong as diamond. First, a piece of metal is fixed in a vacuum furnace. A gas containing carbon is sent in. The gas is electronically broken down and the carbon is given a positive electric charge. At that moment, when the piston is magnetically given a negative electric charge, carbon is attracted to the metal piece. As a result, a flat carbon film forms on the surface. You incorporate this into an automobile engine. It increases the power, which means it becomes more fuel efficient. Why does it increase in power and become energy efficient when it is DLC coated? A piston moves vertically to create motive power, but due to its structure, it is made to slightly move the neck part. And this creates friction. By reducing the friction, the engine can run smoother, producing more power and better fuel efficiency. That is when the Takumi took notice of DLC coating technology that was already being used on drill bits and scissors. Takumi thought if he used it on pistons, it would make the surface hard and flat and reduce friction. But there was a major problem with that. The engine uses light aluminum metal. DLC coating was originally used for hard metal material such as iron and stainless steel. But with aluminum being a soft material, it was thought to be unsuitable for DLC use. That was when the Takumi thought of adding a pretreatment. It is a method known as shot peening. Shot peening is a technique where extremely small round metal shot strikes the surface of the metal, increasing its strength. But as aluminum is a soft material, this method was considered unsuitable. But Shimodaira applied a shot peening process deliberately. Then... The surface has a matte finish into it. This is a 0.8 millimeter small metal ball, which is normally used for shot peening. But the Takumi exchanged that with a 5 micrometer tungsten particle. He thought that by using this material, it should set into the surface of the aluminum. By creating the finest particle possible, and impacting the surface at a high speed, I thought that the friction heat caused by the metal balls would mix into the material. This is aluminum that underwent this unique shot peening process. If you take a look at it with an electron microscope, you can see that the tungsten particles are mixed into the surface. 
When tungsten is mixed into the surface of aluminum, the aluminum becomes harder. And the result is that a stable DLC coating became possible. A piston that has been coated with DLC was tested using a motorbike engine. An ordinary aluminum piston had scratches on it, but a DLC coated one had almost no scratches. This is how it looks when enlarged. Friction had been largely reduced. Shimodaira had succeeded in DLC coating aluminum, an achievement that was once considered impossible. We asked him for his thoughts. I knew I had found the answer when I got the idea of shot peening aluminum and then DLC coating it. I intuitively knew that this was it. In recent years, globalization has been much talked about. So small and mid-sized manufacturers must acquire more skills, I think. As for my company, we aim to work in a niche market. This piston is beginning to be used in race cars and its application in consumer cars is expected in the future. I think that Takumi has showed us that there's still room for further development in car engines. You're right. Actually, the engine's basic structure hasn't changed since the beginning. But the steady improvement of power and fuel efficiency relies on the accumulation of technology development. In addition to that, the Takumi's greatness is that he reconsidered the existing technology from a different angle and applied it. Thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Sato, today we covered a story that might change the perception of dinosaur excavation in Japan. Yes, we did. This discovery has the possibility to change the distribution map of dinosaurs in Japan and the world. That might lead to increased scientists and major discoveries in Japan. I'm looking forward to future excavations. Thank you, Dr. Sato. And that's all for Science View. See you next time.